It's a good sale. Shall we do Salesforce? Let's talk about Salesforce. Tell me about Salesforce, Steve. Okie doke. So here are the numbers for you. So get your pads ready, everybody at home. Uh, revenue was up to $8.25 billion. That's up 11%. Uh, remaining performance obligations was up 7% to $46.7 billion. Uh, adjusted operating income, Paul's favourite measure, was up to $2.27 billion, plus 74% year-on-year. Adjusted EPS was up a similar amount, 72% to $1.69. Uh, that adjusted op margin was up 10 percentage points to 28%, which left you with operating cash flow of about $4.5 billion, a 20 2% increase, uh, margin of about 54%, which is 485 basis points, Steve, because I know you love it when I swap between percentage point and basis bit, uh, basis points. Free cash flow, 4.2 billion, plus 21%, margin was 52%, uh, 432 basis points uh, up, so looking pretty good for them in terms of just the general, uh, the general revenue and cash flow figures. <clears throat> revenue by geography, America was up 10% to 5.5 billion. Europe was up 17% to 1.9 billion. And APAC was up 24% to 792 million. Pulled an interesting slide out of the earnings guide, Steve. Um, non gap expense profile. So this includes uh, marketing, sales of revenue, uh, cost of revenues, research and development, and general and administra uh, administrative. And they've basically shown us that basically since uh, Elliott Management came in and, uh, and all the others came in and uh, said stop spending money on stupid stuff uh, Salesforce has reduced their spending profile by about 10% so from 82% of revenue to 72% of revenue so uh, looking pretty good really um, the non-gap up margin obviously up by a full 10 percentage points gap operating margins up by 4.7 uh, percentage points but that that's still great <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of what they're doing in terms of guidance uh, Q2 revenue was for 8.51 billion to 8.53 billion uh, the Wall Street wanted 8.49 so it was pretty handy beat uh, EPS they've said a dollar 89 to a dollar 90 and Wall Street wanted a dollar 70 so again handy beat and full year revenue uh, Wall Street wanted 34.63 billion uh, they said 34.5 to 34.7 so how about stop banging in the middle of the midpoint and EPS uh, Wall Street wanted 714 and they said 741 to 743. So decent figures all around, I thought here, Steve. Guidance was a little bit weak, I guess, if you were going to criticise anything. Earnings were a little bit subdued. But there was $700 million uh, worth of restructuring in here, and you still haven't seen the full effect of uh, the SBC reductions from all of the layoffs that uh, Salesforce has had. So I think the next couple of earnings, you're going to see that, that true Salesforce earnings power that me and you have spoken about uh, at length over the last sort of three or four quarters. Um, management tried their best to say AI and machine learning a lot on the call, uh, 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 but it wasn't enough. Um, the market sent it down about 6% overnight, uh, but it's only down about 2% on the week. So again, I think these are the sort of figures that you would expect to kind of 2% fall on the week. Uh, lastly, uh, they said that they've reiterated their goal to be the largest, most profitable enterprise software company in the world. And Steve, they've changed what they classify themselves as. So listen to this statement. As we continue on our path for our long-term goal to make Salesforce the largest, most profitable enterprise software company in the world and the number one safest and most trusted, AICRM. How do you feel about that? Uh, pretty terrible uh, with the idea of an AICRM. I didn't hear that. I thought they were positioning themselves <laughs> as a data company was one thing that I read somewhere. One thing question that I had is, are they not the largest enterprise software company in the world? Is that Microsoft then in that case? Does that count as I'm a, sure I'm sorry, you yeah. know, I, I'm not sure how much of Microsoft is enterprise software stuff. But I mean, so when I think about Salesforce, that's either a really big claim being the largest enterprise software company in the world. If you think, OK, we're going hunting Microsoft. Or you think it's not really much of a claim if you think if you don't include Microsoft and presumably you don't really include sort of Google uh, above that either as enterprise software. It's not much of a claim in that case. I'm surprised they're not there yet. Um, Salesforce, when I think about this, I think those earnings sound uh, fine um, to me in terms of the general development of stuff. I'm interested in how the Elliott management dynamic plays out. I'd sort of forgotten they were there. So it's nice to be reminded of um, that going on. I had a kind of slightly left field idea from Salesforce of what I'd like to see happen. And it has not a lot to do with the company uh, here. I sort of wonder what the effect of a recession on them would be. And I mean a sort of 
heavier than expected uh, recession. I realise that, um, Steve, you're not particularly expecting one, and so far you're winning uh, with this uh, bold prediction. But on the one hand, I kind of think a recession would be bad for Salesforce because some of its clients might go broke and therefore not spend any more money with them. But I also sort of think that a number of their competitors might also come under pressure uh, in this and get hoovered up quite easily. So I actually sort of think this is one of those uh, stocks where... If I thought there was going to be a, a deeper than expected recession, which is, which put it that way, might be a recession at all, I wonder whether this might do sneak well, because I wonder whether it might be the case that when you have a kind of X industry event, it's the companies with the biggest, strongest, most powerful balance sheets and, and that kind of thing. And they're pretty good balance sheet wise, I think that tend to come out stronger in a stronger position relative to everyone else than they went in. And this is a thing that I think is going to grow over time. And I wonder whether this might flush out some competition. So I thought in general, the earnings were fine and sort of largely what I was expecting and nothing particularly uh, caused me to, uh, to pin my ears back here. But I was wondering about what the kind of future looks like in terms of a slowing economic environment. And I wonder whether there might be a buying opportunity coming if things turn down more than people are expecting. That's a really good way of uh, thinking about it. It's, I mean, it's going to go through the, ab- the same process as the advertising companies, less spending on things. But CRM is very integral to, to most things. I'd love to see how a, an AI CRM deals with it. I can't, my brain can't figure out any of the things the uses there i assume it's going to be a case of i'm not uh, sure sales forces so, can yeah well this is it right it's they've just they've just made some bold claims and gone well is it necessary is you know do, do we need uh someone making it something make a decision where it could make the wrong decision at certain times very interesting um yeah economic downturn is definitely where you're going to get that uh, you might see something like uh, CRM become com- commodity-like and become cyclical. It'd be, it'd be very interesting to see uh, how that works. Like you say, um, it it will hoover up a few new clients in that in that time as well. They're a bit like ASML in the way that they've got quite a lot of backlog to get through. Do you know what I mean? So even if there's a big mm. sort of cyclical downtail in in business, Salesforce has got like quite a lot of contractual backlog, and that's um, that's what I meant by that comparison. Steve's giggling away in the background like it's the worst comparison known to man. But Salesforce <laughs> is somewhat shielded from a short term recession because of the fact that they've got about uh, a year and a half's revenue in RPO left. So uh, I don't think that they're in a massive issue short term. I think you'd have. I a think your switching time costs sort of and your networking effect and, are really strong. I think that CRMs are yeah, so true. built and there's in, a couple of things so in here. companies these days. Well, there's a couple of things, Paul, <laughs> since you were last on the show. Uh, but when you were last on the show, Salesforce was a very dilutive company. Now the share count's coming down, uh, which is something that you probably like to hear. And uh, the other thing is like, we're in a period now where you, you look at the backwards PE and you look at the forwards PE and you're seeing the two sales forces, the old sales force and this sales force that it's been forced to be. And I can show you that in terms of figures. PE at the moment is 923. Forward PE is 24. So there you go. We are slap bang in the middle of two uh, uh, of, of the two wow. sales forces here. So uh, I did. I think I've said it for the longest time here that. Salesforce is just hiding profitability. Uh, they, they could make profitability whenever they wanted to. They just didn't want to. And they were kind of enjoying being like Hawaii as a company. Um, but um, here we are. Salesforce is showing you that it can be profitable. It's still growing really well. Share count's coming down. Earnings are great. It's making itself more efficient. I don't really see what the problem is here. I think this one's still doing fine. Well, no. I mean, you said it's like ASML, so it's auto buy, right? Auto uh, buy, yeah. I'm going to put it on the ticket behind me. <laughs> Oh, which is just ran out of battery <laughs> <laughs> so, i mean that's basically what i was uh noting there i thought yeah any kind of vague asml kind of comparison and away we go it's a sign that people should just buy it all immediately without thinking because it has an enormous a- AI, yeah, ai chips data center ai crm bye <laughs> um ai crm Not is sort of fascinating to, to me it. i was listening to Motley Fool on this talking about uh, Salesforce. I think it was Tim Byers uh, covering this one. And they're doing a good job of both kind of adding new people and upselling the people or adding more modules onto people that they have. And we've always talked about Salesforce's moat as being a switching cost uh, moat that once you're kind of hooked into that uh, ecosystem, I guess we can call it that. uh, It's hard to kind of change because it involves kind of uprooting quite a bit. And there is a literal switching cost in terms of retraining people onto various different platforms and so on 
I always find with Salesforce, I mean, it's fairly obviously it's a kind of B2B um, thing. And I always find it's kind of a bit far removed for me. And the more companies use terms like um, workflow uh, and stuff like that, which as far as I can tell just means things that you're doing, uh, the more I get convinced that I don't know what they uh, are or understand them or what they do, even though I do use um, Slack and uh, that kind of thing, which is, um, I guess that's an interesting sort of thing, Slack. I sort of wonder what the kind of point or why that's uh, anything more than the kind of messaging platform. But there are apparently strong reasons why people really want um, their stuff to be built in with Slack rather than some other messaging thing. I mean, I also WhatsApp my colleagues as well. So it's a company I struggle to get a bit, but I find it hard to argue that in on paper or in kind of numbers in theory, uh, I really ought to be kind of interested in this. Forward PE of 24 that means earnings growth of I can't even count how much percent, Steve. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that I think that's Any enough last on that thoughts? one. Uh, what have we got next? 